Well, I wanted to do just a quick update on this General International 4-inch bandsaw. Now, a few people have informed me that apparently this model is discontinued. I didn't realize that when I purchased it, but I wasn't purchasing it so that I could promote it or anything like that. It just happened to be the cheapest bandsaw that I saw that looked like this and I thought was good quality from what I could tell from the pictures. However, I was looking at the win, but the win was $25 more than this one. It was $325 on Amazon, where this was just $299. But I think the win is a great option. A couple of differences between this and the win that I noticed was the switch is actually up here, which probably is more convenient. And it has a potentiometer to adjust the speed rather than this little selector switch. Now, me personally, I've just been running it on low. It's been working fine, so I don't really see the potentiometer. A lot of these models have the potentiometer on them, and, you know, a $5 potentiometer is not worth uh, $30 to me, so I didn't really think it was that big of a deal. But the wind does seem to have the same castings, the same base. Everything looked really similar to this one, so I think it's... Uh, a great alternative to this one and it is the next cheapest one available I think the clutch is about uh, 350 370 and the win is about 325 but I will post a link to those on Amazon in the video description if that's what you're interested in you can check those out also I've made a couple of tweaks uh, to this saw since the last video and a couple of you guys have made some comments about the switch that I installed, and I agree. It's not really the safest. You turn the saw on, which is fine because you have it raised up. You turn the saw on, it does its cut, and it shuts the saw off, which is great. However, when we lifted the saw back up, it would turn back on, which is not good. There were a couple of times over the last couple of weeks, a few times, where I forgot to turn it off and I had to reach over and turn it off. So, not really a safe way to do it. So, what I've done is I've rewired the switch so that you have to turn it on. The switch turns it off, and then when you lift the switch, it stays off. And in order to turn it on, you have to turn it on again which is good because you only have to hit the button one time to turn it on and then that's it. This switch has an internal relay in there so as long as you provide 110 volts to it it will stay on and then once you remove the 110 volts it will shut off. So what I did was I just reconfigured it so the incoming power goes through this switch and that way it allows it to turn on and off with this switch. Now it won't turn on if the saw is down it will only turn on if the saw is up. And once it hits the switch, it turns it off and keeps it off because it de energizes that internal relay. Another thing I did was uh, it wasn't cutting vertically square. What I did was I, I started looking at everything to see what was going on. And I noticed that as the saw came up, it actually moved away from it kind of came up at an angle like this and well that was not going to do uh, very good with vertical cut so what I did was really simple fix I'm not really sure I guess it's in the base of the saw here or, or something's not quite right but all I had to do was just shim this with some uh, this just some sheet metal it's uh, 40 thousandths sheet metal and uh, I just shimmed one side of the vise and then so now it's uh, nice and square as it comes up and it gives me um, really nice vertical cuts now most of the stuff that I cut on here is rough I'm just roughing it to size anyways uh, to do some other machining processes on it so it's not real critical However, I wanted to be as square as possible. Now it's really good. So, 
getting it square that was one uh, one thing I've tweaked on it uh, here recently and then the other is changing the configuration of the switch which was really fairly simple and uh, for those of you interested in it I'll go through the wiring in just a minute uh, another thing I want to point out is this switch location I didn't realize this guide once if you slide this guide up it's not going to touch the switch anymore because this piece of sheet metal moves so I need to either make an extension on this piece of sheet metal or raise this plunger up so that it hits the saw here um, for me personally it's not really been a big deal because most of the stuff that I cut is three and four inches and so that puts it in the range where it would um, actuate the switch so those are just a few uh, things that I've had to do to tweak this. I wanted to make everybody aware that this saw apparently is not available anymore. But if you're interested in one of these four inches, check out the win, which is 325. And I think the clutch is about 350, something like that, 360. And they're both very similar to this particular model. For those interested in how I rewired the switch, let's look at that now. For the rest of you guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe. Hey guys. All right, so in the last video, we rewired it so that the switch would switch on and off the saw instead of the hand trigger. And so this is how we had it wired up. So we've got power coming in, 110 volts coming in, and here is our neutral. And then it comes goes through this switch now this switch is like a relay switch so uh, if you remove the 110 volts off of the switch it will kick out so we're going to use that to our benefit and then it it comes out of the switch here goes down over to our under switch to turn it on and off it comes back through our switch into uh, this variable resistor here or this diode uh, goes up to this low high and then up to the motor and then this is the other side of the motor so what we're going to do is instead of switching the output we're going to switch the input voltage and all right guys so I've rewired it so that now uh, it should be a little bit safer uh, you don't have to worry about the saw coming on when you uh, get finished with the cut and lift it up. So what we've got is we've got our power coming uh, in and over here to our uh, our neutrals here, and then our power goes uh, over to our plunger switch with the white wire here. Uh, it returns here. And so that is our uh, contact for our incoming power. And then we come out. We're going over here into our diode to regulate our speed. And the other side here goes up to the other side of the motor. So what we've got is you can't, you can't really turn it on unless you lift the saw. So now that the saw is lifted... Once the saw is lifted and you press start, it will come on. And then, of course, when it hits the plunger, it'll turn off. And if you lift it again, it kicks out this relay. So let's try it again. And I can physically hear it clicking and feel it click the internal relay. So now when I lift the saw, it's not going to come back on. So that's probably the safest way. I tried it the other way and it seemed to work fine for me. There were a few occasions where I lifted the saw and uh, forgot to turn it off and it came back on. But for the most part, uh, once I got used to it, it was, it was actually alright. So either way, uh, but this is probably the safest. If you're going to be running any kind of coolant or anything with this little saw, which I don't foresee that I will, uh, you got to be mindful of this switch because you've got electricity running down here in the bottom so you don't want to get any kind of anything wet under there 
um, I'm going to button this back up and then we'll uh, get a good look at how it works and operates but I think this is going to be uh, probably a safer method that way the saw's not on when you lift it up right, I'm going to get this buttoned up and then we'll uh, give it a test run alright so I've got it all buttoned up and back together and you can see how it works now a little bit easier I guess um, so if we turn it on nothing happens as long as the saws down because this switch is activated over here this is a normally closed switch so when the uh, plunger is down it's activated so if we lift it up nothing happens until we turn it on and as soon as it hits the plunger it kills the power which de-energizes this internal relay in the switch here and turns it off so that's probably the way I should have wired it originally um, but I wanted to try the other way I wasn't real sure how I was going to do it and I really didn't like the idea of sending power down through here uh, but I guess either way you're going to have power down through there uh, on this switch once again you can turn it on when it's down nothing happens you have to raise it up get your stock in there get everything set there's no way it's going to come on get everything lined up and clamped and once you get started you can turn it on make your cut and then as soon as it hits the switch it's going to kill the relay inside and it'll be safe and you can lift it up alright guys so that wraps up uh, this video just a quick update on that modification and so I think this will probably be as terms of the saw inadvertently coming on when you raise it up or something uh, this will, this is more of a safer option because it cuts off immediately and then it will not cut back on unless you press the start button again over here so guys if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in click on that subscribe button down below that way when I post a new video if it's something you're interested in they'll send you a link and you can stop by and check it out as always please feel free to ask questions make suggestions or leave comments alright guys thanks for watching please subscribe and most importantly be safe